Well, for some stand back analysis, we're joined by, from, Van, from Toronto by Steve Anderson. He's the open media advocate who launched this campaign to, to, to bolster uh, or to stop user based billing. And here in the foyer, I'm joined by digital affairs analyst Mark Levis. Welcome to you both. Steve, I want to go to you hey. first. Is this a victory? I'm trying to, it's like a compromise. Maybe there's some wins, some losses. How are you seeing it? Yeah, well, I think it's a step in the right direction. I mean, it, it does look like it will enable independent ISPs to provide unlimited, unmetered uh, internet access to Canadians. Um, and, and, you know, 500,000 people signed their Stop the Meter petition, so I'm glad to see that uh, the Commission has changed its mind about that. Um, that. That is a step in the right direction. But on the other hand, um, it, it, I'm concerned about how some of the rates break down and uh, there's potential that uh, some of the independent ISPs might have some more costs. Um, and, you know, 96% of the telecom market in Canada is uh, controlled by a few big telecom companies and, and clearly to bring prices down what we actually need to do is enable independent competitors and uh, so it, it does look like it's a little bit of a mixed ruling but uh, I would say it's a step in the right direction and now it's up to the CRTC and the government to build on this to fix uh, what I think is a broken telecom market in Canada. Oh, was well, elaborate on that. What's What's broken about the market now? Sure. Well, we, we, we pay some of the highest prices in the industrialized world, which is, also, of course, uh, not good for our economy and not good for our society in general. Um, we, we have 96% of the market, as I said, is controlled by a few companies, so there's not a, enough choice um, for service. Um, so it's really about affordability and choice, and, and that's the problem. And, and basically, um, the situation is now uh, is that Canadians, uh, Canadian businesses, civil society organizations, all want there to be a restructured market um, that will enable independent and affordable access. And it's really just a few companies on the other side that, that want to you know, hog tie the competition and uh, maintain a stranglehold on the industry. All right, Mark Levis, I want to go to you on this. Um, you called it just before we went on air, sort of a classic Canadian compromise. Is that what we have here? Well, to be fair, it was something, it was a message that was going around on Twitter. Um, this is a situation, of course, where um, it's unclear what people have won and what people have lost. It, it, it's clear that, that, for example, Bell did not get what they wanted, um, but it's also unclear what the overall impact is going to be on the consumer. Um, we talk about um, the 5% of people who are going to benefit from this versus the 95 and um, there's a little bit of laughing when you consider you know, this whole Occupy movement with the 1% and the 99%. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, but what, what's really fascinating about this is how we arrived at this, with, as Steve points out, with this 500,000 uh, signature petition that, uh, that got the ball rolling. We had, at one time, we had Tony Clement and, and, and the Prime Minister involved in, in rallying for the consumers' um, attention and noting that this is not going to be good for consumers and something has to be done. Yeah, but Steve, I want to go back to you on that. I, I don't know whether it was the petition or the fact that the government said, we're going to force you to change your mind, which made this decision sort of flip-flop a bit. What do you think it was? Did you have the, were you the guys that made the catalyst for this decision, or was it the heavy hand of the government saying we didn't like the first one? Oh, well, I mean, I, I think it was both. Um, the, the only re reason the government acted on this is and told them to do that is because of our petition. We were at first targeting industry Tony Clement, and we said, listen, you have to tell the CRTC to go back to the drawing board and fix this decision. And then after our, our petition got up around 400,000, he suddenly decided that we were right. Um, so I would say that, yeah, it was the government that made that call and pushed the CRTC to do, do this review, but um, it was only because of the petition. And, and I have to say, it's because of Canadians, because it's not just the petition. Canadians made videos. Um, th there's a ton of hilarious videos on this subject, and some serious as well, that went viral. Um, th there's Canadians that called their MPs. Um, there's people who went out in the street and got signatures and educated their fellow Canadians. So it was really a, a grassroots movement uh, that enabled this to happen and, and also the independent ISPs fought to, to save their businesses as well. I sort of wonder though, Mark, whether if we had Christian Parody, the current industry minister back then, whether the review would have been ordered because Tony Clement's a pretty savvy guy, is he not? Well, when he was industry minister, he was very involved, very active uh, on matters of copyright and usage-based billing. He got right into the conversation. He wasn't afraid to meet criticism and to have, uh, and, and to have the debate online in, in the open world, as it were. 
um, and I've talked to many people, many of whom disagree with the politics that Tony Clement represents, but they're the first to say that they feel like they know him, they feel like they could go and have a beer with him, and they feel like he understands the issues even if, if he represents a different point of view. And it, you contrast that with Christian Paradis, who isn't really on Twitter, hasn't tweeted I think since it was June or July 24th, and hasn't really spoken up about this issue online the way we saw Tony Clement. One thing that strikes me is that we talk about these large bandwidth gobbling users, but that's probably going to be the average user in about five years, right? I mean, Absolutely. Mm -hmm. The digital economy is putting so many demands on, you know, when you think about distance education, entertainment, movies and television shows are now being delivered through the internet, uh, um, lectures, uh, universities, um, all these different modes of, of communication and the way we interact with governments and business. Um, we really need to have the infrastructure and it has to be affordable and accessible to everybody. All right, Steve, last lap to you, Steve. Uh, what's this going to mean in the, in the years to come, do you think, this decision? Well, well I, I think actually, um, I, you know, I, I met with the industry minister's office recently and I think they do understand that it's their job to encourage choice and affordability. Um, so I, I'm cautiously optimistic and um, in terms of the years ahead, it, it will definitely be up to this majority government to um, make sure that the market changes because we, we, we need to have more affordable choices in Canada. We need the rates to come down. Um, we need investment in, in the industry and um, th they have the power to do it and uh, you know it's time to fix this broken market because um, it, it's, it's a, having a negative impact on our economy every day and uh, on the opportunity of Canadians as well. Okay, Steve Anderson, Mark Levis, thank you very, both of you, for shedding some light on this.